It's the final game of the season. One last chance for glory for the seniors. One last chance for victory here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. Welcome into the Game Show Gap podcast pregame show. I'm Todd Panula alongside Corey Madden. We're here to bring you all of tonight's exciting action as the Fighting Illini from Illinois take on your Maryville Saints. Well, Corey, last night, obviously, Illinois came up short. Maryville with a rather impressive 5-1 to one victory, and it was headlined by two call-ups scoring their first goal at the D1 level in Logan Mueller and uh, at Lonesdale as well. They kind of bookended the, the scoring for Maryville in a rather impressive victory. Yeah, we were just kind of talking about that, how, how important it is for those people, you know, those players to swing up. You said they're at a point per game at D2 and then come up and then put points up. That's that's real important to, to you know, show kind of the depth this organization has built. So it's pretty exciting to hear about. So Mueller scored in the first period at 12.51, and then Lonesdale would score uh, four on four at 12.51 in the third period. So each one getting themselves a goal last night as we see the goal there from Mueller. Uh, just a nice little play to score from the top of the circle there, and then Lonesdale would get the goal in the third period. Again, kind of bookending the scoring for the Maryville Saints. So we take a look at that goal. Just kind of a little garbage goal there. It popped back out. Lonesdale with the backhand shoveled it past the goaltender. And that was the fifth goal of the game. So overall, a rather impressive performance. Uh, Something that you'd probably expect with an unranked team going against the number nine team in the country with the Saints. Yeah, just Maryville's got to be careful not to play, you know, play down. This game's still important. Um, this is the last game heading into to playoffs, so they, they need to be on top of it and, and uh, play Maryville's hockey and not kind of let this one just be another game. Speaking of playing Maryville hockey, one of the guys that has done so very well in a rather short time with the program is Tymon Prexler, and he has earned some honors in terms of international play as he will get to play for t- fire basically for this team he's got the stick handling ability that he could technically be a forward but he's able to play defense just as well and he activates from the blue line and uh, provides a lot of different aspects for this program yeah how exciting is that to have a a top-notch player like that he's a freshman coming in as a freshman right and and i think he's what he is Uh, sophomore sophomore yeah sophomore so you still got some years left of him, and, and that's pretty cool for the program, uh, you know, all across the board to have someone like this come in and then be able to go play, uh, you know, in a national tournament like that. So you saw the stats there. More than a point per game for Time and Prexler, so a rather important uh, performance on the offensive end. Defensively, he's just as sound. He'll be in the starting lineup here this evening. But before we get to that, let's talk about some of the guys that are going to be playing their last home game in the regular season for the Maryville Saints. We've got three seniors that will be honored here tonight as they play for the Maryville Saints uh, in the Maryville University Hockey Center for the final time. Cole Bonnet, Jack Harrison, and Johnny Macera. Macera, obviously 42 games played. He's been very quality in between the pipes. 2.77 goals against a save percentage, just over 90%. Jack Harrison has been the captain for several seasons now. He's got almost 100 points. It would be really nice to see him eclipse that 100-point marker before he hangs it up in the Maryville Saints locker room. And then Cole Bonnet, just a a stout defender, more of a defenseman uh, on the defensive side, I should say, than getting too many points. But overall, 27 points, nothing to uh, shake a stick at either. Yeah, that's three tough players to replace on the Maryville roster right there. Cole Bonnet, you know, he, he blocks shots, he makes plays, he's a great defenseman, and then the heart and soul of your team is, is Jack, so having a, congratulates, you know, congratulations to them on a great career, but it's gonna, it's gonna hurt trying to replace that kind of, you know, production. Right, well, we're seeing it go through uh, similar stuff in the NHL with uh, Ryan O'Reilly leaving the St. Louis Blues with it, uh, a trade to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Different situation, obviously, here for Maryville, but they're going to have to try to replace their captain as well come next season. But speaking of Jack Harrison, he's one of our three players to watch for for the Maryville Saints. 
as he comes into tonight. Uh, rolling on a decent offensive performance. The captain has been doing pretty well. He's one of the team's leading scorers, picking up more on the assists as opposed to goals. But overall, he has just been a leader in all three phases. Chad McElwain, obviously, one newcomer for this team coming over from Iowa State, is another player that the Saints have leaned quite heavily on. And then Cole Bonnet from the blue line, not necessarily a big offensive producer, but he gets the puck to the net. He doesn't have a whole lot of those shots blocked, and he's just a stout defensive presence as well, as we see their statistics on the screen now. Bonnet, only five points on the season, but that's not what Coach Hogan looks for from him. He looks more for the physical side. Jack Harrison has put up seven goals and 14 points, and Chad McElwain in his first season in a Maryville uniform has done just as well with seven goals and 15 points. So three players that are going to be key for Maryville if they hope to pick up a victory here this evening. Yeah, and, I, and Jack Harrison, you know, he's got that, like, extra level, the extra gear that most players wish they had. So you know he's going to be an exciting game from him. It's his last last home game, theoretically. So it's just going to be – I'm looking forward to seeing him play and see what he can do. Well, one of the other seniors that we talked about was Johnny Macera. Johnny Cage is going to be in between the pipes here this evening. He will get the start for the Maryville Saints. He's played 15 games this season. Uh, his record, not necessarily as good as he would like, but overall he's been a solid performer, a 3.11 goals against. Safe percentage a little lower once again than he would like, but uh, he's one of those goaltenders that he's always active. He, put, he handles the puck very well. He comes out. He's almost a third defenseman for this team. Yeah, that's what that's kind of what I was going to say. He's a scrappy goaltender, loves to play the puck, plays it pretty good, um, and he's just a fighty, like, you know, he likes to mix it up a little bit in goal, and I think that's a good good tendency to have. Well, we talked about Macera. Let's look at the other five starters that will be playing out on the open ice for the Maryville Saints. The starting lineup is brought to you by Frank's Auto Body this evening. Johnny Macera is in between the pipes. On one side of the defense is Timon Prexler. Joining him will be his line mate in Garrett Hunter. Moving up to the forward line, it is going to be Felix Turcott on the left wing, centered by Logan Mueller, as one of the freshmen gets the start here tonight, and his teammate from the Chesterfield area is Sawyer Lonsdale, as he will get the start here this evening as well. One final look at the entire Maryville starting lineup that we'll be playing this evening. So. One more chance for victory here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. What do you expect to see from these two teams taking on Illinois tonight? Yeah, I, I, ex I expect the Saints to come out and, and play their game of hockey. Um, it's kind of a hard opponent to kind of get ready for the playoffs, but they're just going to have to do what they can to stay, stay focused, stay mentally ready, play simple hockey, and uh, honor the seniors. All you can do is play the teams that are on the schedule, and that's what Maryville looks to do here tonight as they try for the season sweep over the Illinois Fighting Illini. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the puck drop here on Senior Night from the Maryville University Hockey Center. Don't go too far. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. Learning in person or online, what works best for you? At Maryville, we let you decide. It's your education, your choice, giving you what you really want, the power of options to create a personalized university experience as unique as you are. Go to class, participate in campus activities, take advantage of student support services, face-to-face -face or through a screen. We've merged the best of both worlds to give you a university experience that fits your life. Finally, the choice is yours. College has changed for good. Maryville UX, the future of higher learning. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse. 
proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us, with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right, you'll see. Maryville Saints Hockey Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association. This is a team that's really held its own. Top 10 in ACHA Division I hockey. Now it's a new season. New pack of dogs. New blood in the group. But that's what makes this team successful. They don't dwell on the past. They keep moving forward. They keep pushing, keep striving until they reach that ultimate goal. And you better believe these new guys, they want the same thing. They're ready they're hungry, and they're just waiting to be unleashed.
missing pauses. You mean passes? No, pauses. The secret to winning is to pause. Time out! I'm taking a step back. What's the reason? Sometimes you gotta stop to be, you know, an actual human. Take a minute to celebrate, right? Or 20. Pause is power. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center as we're just about set for puck drop between the Fighting Illini and the Saints. Senior night. One last chance for the seniors to pull off a victory here and improve their home record to nine and six with a win. Overall, the Saints come in at 18 and 10, number nine in the country as Harrison jabs one over towards the red line. Eddington sends it in for Illinois as they try to chase it down. A little saucer pass over towards the near wing. Bonnet is bumped off the puck by Matt Veev. Bonnet with it in the near side corner, hands it off to Harrison. So Coach Hogan going with a last minute change in the starting lineup. It was originally scheduled to be uh, what was last night the fourth line, but giving Jack Harrison a chance to get into the starting lineup here tonight as Cameron Ware comes into the zone, stick handles up through the slot, and then pinched off by two defenders. Fluttering puck comes over here to the near side. Eddington is walled off as MacArthur stepped up. Cameron Ware in charge of the puck to the far corner. Jackson White was calling for it, but no passing lane was available. White has it now, wrist shot towards goal. Ware with a chance, and that one goes high and wide. Your starting goaltender this afternoon, early evening, what have you, is Nolan Woodring for Illinois. Adams comes in and plays it off the dasher. White will chase it down, serves it out in front, and a save made by Woodring. Chad McElwain with the one-timer on the doorstep. So Corey, you gotta figure one of the keys for tonight is gonna be managing the early emotions. Obviously, anytime you have a pregame ceremony, sometimes that can throw players off their normal routine. Yeah, I'm sure John has, has them ready to go. They've had a lot going on kind of, you know, this season, so they're just they're just excited to get out here and play for their, their seniors. TJ Prexler gets the puck down low. It pops over towards the far corner. Adams couldn't handle it. Blind pass through the middle, finds no one. Bedlinski tossed it up towards the blue line. Second attempt gets it into the zone, but again, nobody in orange in possession. Not quite two minutes played here in the first period. Turner with this stretch pass finds T.J. Prexler. He's got a little bit of a seam, but ran out of room. Adams sweeps it down towards the point. Didn't get there. It was cut off by Midlinski. Reifke from the far wing sends one towards goal. Blockered away by Macera. T.J. Prexler gains the red line and chips it in as the team is changing on the fly. Illinois getting a partial change as well. Fighting Illini come up the right wing and then it's saucered into the zone by McDonough. Macera leaves it and it's filtered through to Timon Prexler. He wings this one way up in the air and it stays in play, didn't hit the rafters. Zlotty lost control of it as it slides over here towards the near side. Timon Prexler hands it off. McLeod was looking for Zlotty in front, but there was a defensive stick in the way. Illinois gets it out of the zone with a little bump to knock Hunter off the puck. Fighting line night, try to dump it in. They don't get it too deep, but far enough to get a line change out of it. Timon Prexler gains both lines, chips it down low. Here comes Lonesdale. He tries to hand it off to Charche. He tried to get it towards the point. Floating puck up towards the blue line and it escapes. 16.40 left to go in the period. Saints completing a late line change and a giveaway by Macera. Put it right on the tape of Matt Beeve. He's one of the players for Illinois that you don't want to hand that puck off to, but 
The Saints live to fight another day as a glove save is made on the other end and we'll have an offensive zone draw with 16.23 to go. So overall, Corey, how do you like the flow of the game thus far in the first uh, three minutes and change? I don't, I, Maryville kind of seems kind of relaxed, a little too relaxed. That's This is a kind of a catch game, you know? Uh, anything can happen in, in sports in general, but especially hockey, if you just lay back and sit on your toes, things can change in a hurry. As you've seen uh, a couple seconds ago, the goalie gave it up. So right now, Maryville just trying to hem him in the zone. Coach Hogan kind of altering some of his lines here. It's now we get the uh, line of uh, the two freshmen as well as Felix Turcott. Shot was put on, pad save was made by Woodring. Saints keep it in on the near side. Woodring tried to slow it up, but it escapes. Maryville gonna roll a partial line change. Illinois gets it out into the neutral zone. Jack Harrison sweeps at it. Medlinski was a little bit stronger on the stick. Cross heights, it comes to Bonnet. He'll saucer one into the near side corner. Dorian is there for Illinois. Ware tried to lift his stick. It's held in by Colt Quartz. Ware sweeps at it. Dusted in by Harrison. Dorian tracks it down for Illinois. Bonnet gloves it down at the blue line. Slaps it towards goal, but it float, floated away into the high slot. Closing in on five minutes played. Illinois doing the dump and chase, minus the chase, as they were getting some fresh legs out on the ice. Far side it goes, and then Adante just kind of pushed it into the zone. Bonnet gives it away on the circle. Adante has it, gets it away from the hash marks, slows it up on the half wall. Edwards on the backside pressure, was able to separate man from puck. Ware gets it at the red line, hands it off. Edwards brings it in, Ware is in tow, and then they just dropped the puck and nobody picked it up. Matt Veeve carries in, past Adams, Matt Veeve to the forehand and a poke check made. Out to center, here's TJ Prexler, one on one with McDonald. He puts it into the middle, he was looking for McIlwain, but Illinois spotted it well. Matt Veeve is all by himself, so he'll just slide that one in. Timon Prexler struggling to get a handle on that puck. Illinois sends it cross corner. Garrett Hunter on it now as he circles around his own goal. Gave it away in the process. Cobb has it. Left it along the boards. Midlinski tried to return the favor and get a return pass. Maryville picked it off. Adams pushes it up. Here's T.J. Prexler. He'll slow it up this time. Drops it for Adams, but the puck bounced on him. Simon Prexler just flops one into the zone. Illinois trying to stretch it out. Here comes Midlinski on the left wing. Deflected in, high off the glass. Jackson White in control of it for Maryville. He'll leave it for MacArthur in behind his own net. Charche just brushed that one up towards his teammate in McLeod. Charche in a chase on the far side. Instead, Helfer got there first. Illinois is going to ice it. That'll stop the clock with 12.51 to go here in the first period. And to your point, Corey, it's been kind of a slow, methodical first period. Only four shots, three to one in favor of Maryville in that category. Yeah, I thought they would have more energy playing for the seniors, you know. It's kind of a similar game yesterday. Didn't get the opening goal till 12.51 uh, of the first period, but it's just been kind of an odd weekend of hockey so far for Maryville. Linesman wasn't comfortable with uh, McLeod coming in on the faceoff. Second attempt, did drop it. McLeod gets it in the near side corner. Bumped off the puck by Anderson. Zlotty on his backhand. Punched away, but White keeps it in the zone. MacArthur carries into the corner, slows it up. McLeod out muscles a couple defensive sticks. 
Charche picks up the loose puck after it went high off the window. Now they're in a tussle. McCartha comes out. Zlotty goes to the far side. White back to Zlotty. Just outside the high slot. Now here's McCartha. Wrist shot deflected wide. Charche sweeps it back into the corner. McLeod steps on it and then pushes it back towards the corner wall. Zlotty in front to Charche, and that one was knocked away. On his horse is Jackson White. Leaves it, but off the skates of McLeod. Not good communication from Illinois on the far side, but we're going to get a penalty behind the play, and Illinois is going to head to the power play. The official inside the zone didn't like what he saw out of Jackson White. He'll spend the next few minutes in the sin bin on a roughing call. Yeah, I, I looked away. I didn't see it. At least you're honest. <laughs> Chuck was texting me. He te he's texting the group. You know, we're poor, we're, a, we're a little busy here, Chuck. Leave us alone. Poor little Chuck. Illinois had six power plays last night. Did score their lone goal on the man advantage, a five on three, in fact. It came almost directly off the faceoff. So Maryville's done a little bit better here this time around. It, not allow a shot directly off the draw. Here's Anderson from the circle, drops it back straight away point. Helfer gives it back, Anderson on the half wall. Helfer walks the line. Far side it goes to Eddingen. Into the bumper for Cobb. Helfer, far circle. Eddingen dusted it off a couple times. Helfer gets it down low, Anderson couldn't handle it. Matt Beeb is bumped off the puck and the Saints will clear. Helfer's all the way back. Saints have got a line change on their penalty killers. Little over nine minutes played as Maryville wins another 50-50 battle in the neutral zone. Under a minute to go in the Fighting Illini power play. As they come up the middle. Helfer, I think that was intended for McDonough, but didn't go anywhere close to where he wanted it to. Illinois gets it down deep. Macera is out of the goal. Left it for his defenseman, and that's a good clearance by Maryville. 35 seconds left in the power play. 10-15 left in the period. Illinois will try the far wing, and again, showing some uh, disorientation. McDonald does get it into the zone. Eddingen held it in. Macera left it for Corpse, and he'll get it the length of the ice this time. Real solid kill so far. Nine seconds left, but really, other than the first 10, 15 seconds, Illinois just couldn't get set up in the zone. Well, Maryville's had plenty of uh, practice on their penalty <laughs> kill the last couple games. They've now killed off seven. Excuse me, six out of seven. Matt V brings it in over on the far corner, surrounded by a couple Maryville players. McElwain was able to separate the puck from that dust up. McElwain is in charge of it. He skates it into the zone, but they're going to say that Lonesdale was offside on the far wing. Well, what do you what do you, what do you see needs to change? What needs to happen for Maryville to get to get to their next level, the Maryville level, you know? It's it's one of those things I feel like it's easier said than done. They gotta find some sort of energy. Uh, to your point earlier, they're they're just kind of going through the motions a little bit. Maybe this fourth line can get it, and they do! Second goal in as many games. Logan Mueller slips it through the five hole from the hash marks. And it's one to nothing Saints. Well, that kind of seemed harmless and then next thing you know it's in the back of the net. Sometimes that's what you need. Off the face off win, it came over towards Mueller. 
He had a good shooting lane. There was a little bit of traffic in front, but he got it through the defenders and split the wickets to the goaltender. And the only thing that he didn't manage to do was match the uh, time stamp on last night's goal. He got it two minutes too early. So 10.51 is the time of the goal here tonight. Mueller with his second. Saints go rink wide, Chartier with the interception. It's dropped off. And in towards goal. So normally I don't get into inside baseball, but do want to clear up a, a little bit of confusion. So there's a back and forth going on as to the pronunciation of Logan Mueller. So we, we had a fan yesterday who said it's Miller, but I in the pronunciation guide, and then I talked to Jeff Crenshaw, who is the record, uh, recruiting coordinator. He said it's Mueller, so that's why I'm going with that. So I apologize if it is Miller. Chartier comes over here to the near side. Little backhand chance from Ware. That's an easy glove save from Woodring. We just need to come up with like a catchy, a catchy nickname for him. Right. You know, <laughs> then that way you don't have to worry about it. Maybe, maybe we'll go the soccer route and just call him Logan. <laughs> 7.22 to go in the first period. One to nothing, Saints. <laughs> Illinois trying to get a stretch pass out to McLean, but... That's just been kind of the weekend and the really overall season that it's been for the Fighting Illini. I just haven't been on the same page. So what could have been an easy outlet ends up an icing against them. And Maryville will have it in the offensive zone. Saints win the draw. Cameron Ware gets it back to the point. Bonnet sends it to Corpse. Shot on off the waffle board and into the far corner. Corpse hits it again. Deflected, oh baby, a great chance from Ware in front, but it went just a little too high. Ware gets it down towards the end line. Here's Sam Edwards, he is smashed up against the glass. He gets up quickly, plays it off the dashers to Bonnet, he walks the line, thought about the wrister, instead it's now a corpse. He takes a drive and that's a pad save way out in front. Illinois has it along the boards. Harrison comes up and disrupts it, but then Corpse just let it slip out of the zone a little too much. Forced back in by Bonnet as he goes off for a change. Harrison on the four check, came up empty, but got a little bit of the physicality going. Cameron Ware comes in, Edwards is in tow. He takes the pass, shot was blocked. Edwards has Hutter back at the point. Tried to split the defenders instead, and then Illinois clears it out. 14 minutes played in the first period. Saints rim it around. Illinois plops it back out to center ice. Adams off the dashers. Hunter was in the zone. Adams with the interception. McElwain in the slot, shoots, and that one goes high and wide. May have nibbled off the glove, but just put a little too much on that. Deflected shot by McElwain and another stop by Woodring. TJ Prexler backhands it into the zone. Adams has to chase. Dorian walled him off, and he actually got the worst of that. Tied up along the end wall. Saints dig into the scrum. It's McElwain and TJ Prexler in there. Lucas Adams lift a sick. McElwain gets it back. Timon Prexler just outside the circle. He's bumped off the puck. Pirouette pass. 
Ultimately ends up in the hands of Illinois as they shuffle it into the zone. Shots are nine to two, so pretty similar to what we saw yesterday as Macero will have an easy grab. Just his third save of the game. Well, at least Illinois seems to be picking up the, the physical play a little bit. Yeah, you almost have to figure, we saw some hitting going on from Illinois yesterday, but I almost think they're of two minds. They, they want to get physical, but they also know how things have gone for the season, so they don't want the game to get out of hand because they went for a hit and didn't come up with the puck. But here come the Saints in the offensive zone. Lonesdale, he's got Mueller in front, took the shot instead. Glanced off the goaltender and went out of play. Not a bad idea to take a shot there. But he tried to go short side instead of the glove hand side and it ends up up into the protective netting. Fired around here to the near side, out of the reach of McLean as Turner comes up with a nice hold. Stick lifted, Lonesdale with the interception, puts it in front. Turcott was there, but so was the defender. Back out towards the Maryville line, stretch pass up the near wing. Turcott plays it in and Mueller chases. He'll carry it around to the far corner, plays it to the point. Tic-tac-toe they go. Turner gets it down low. Turcott from the half wall. Turcott from the goal line. Gets it in behind the net. Lonesdale on his backhand to the forehand to Jackson White at the point. He'll take a wrister, and that one had all the steam taken out of it as a block was made. It did still trickle in on goal, but Woodring just covered. So a very similar first period, as I mentioned. The shots yesterday after 20 minutes ended up 11 to two. It's 11 to three now, so statistically Illinois with a slightly better period. Another shot from the point goes wide. His corpse is trying for a little bit of glory. Charche pushes it into the far corner. Another good step up from the Maryville defense as Corpse holds it. Now the Saints starting to throw the body a little bit as McLeod stapled someone to the wall. In front for Charche. McLeod with a backhand chance and it's stopped by the left pad. That was a desperation save, sprawling out. Great effort by the goalie. Yeah, Woodring down on his stomach, just trying to take away whatever he could. And he was actually a bit fortunate because that puck ended up just underneath the pad, but that actually benefited him as he sealed it against the ice. Face-off win for Maryville. The pass back to Zlotti was a little bit off the mark. Illinois trying to get it out of their own zone. And that's been a struggle the last couple games. Here's Zlotti for Charche. Puts it into the middle. McLeod was there, but the pass wasn't. Zlotti from the top of the circle. Shot. Sticked away by the goaltender. Halfer looking to clear it out. He'll skate it up towards the blue line. Threading the needle on some passes, and then the shot from Illinois on the right side. Adante was deflected up and out of play. So the clock stops with 2.41 to go in the period. Trail linesman didn't like something about that face-off attempt, so we'll do it all over again. Up through the middle, Sam Edwards takes the pass from time and Prexler, Cameron Ware guides it into the zone. Way out of the goal is Woodring. 
Played it high off the glass and it stays in. Harrison hammers it down low. Getting to it first is McDonough, but he had his stick lifted. As Cameron Ware takes down a man. Harrison jamming at it. It ended up towards the near post, but Maryville didn't have a man there to put in to what would have been an empty net. Harrison comes all the way back. The captain slows it up. Under two to go in the period. Feather pass towards the near side. Garrett Hunter comes up and takes it. His time and Frexler was waiting there. Ware comes, I think that was intended to go rink wide. Instead, Edwards took it in the middle. Harrison goes skate to stick. Edwards is stapled, and now a chance on the doorstep from Cameron Ware. A couple quick saves from Woodring. Ware just didn't have the angle on that chance. Medlinski comes the other way. Poke tracked away by Simon Prexler. He looks for an outlet. 120 left in the period. Saints start from behind their own cage. Simon Prexler outlets it through Chad McElwain. Adams is in the middle. Adams touched it towards goal and it ends up just wide. TJ Prexler leaves it. Adams is on it. Exchanges places with White. One timer for MacArthur, but that went off the heel. Adams takes a long shot and a glove save. Forty-five seconds left in the opening period. Saints starting to show a little bit more life here in the last five minutes or so. Face off one by Adams. T.J. Prexler got to it in the corner, but was quickly sealed off. Blowing a tire is Adams, but the Saints still come up with it. T.J. Prexler tried to guide it out in front. Now we're going to have a penalty. Both officials had their arms <clears throat> up in the air. Chad McElwain is still down at the end wall, and the Saints are going to be up a man. I don't, I don't. I didn't see the call. Interference or something had to have been. Yeah, that's the officials haven't been overly. Uh, they they really haven't been that good the last couple of games in terms of signaling when you think they do. So it's a penalty one way or the other. Saints will be on the power play for the fifth time now in two games. They were one for four last night. Simon Prexler steps up and gets it in the corner. McLeod sets it up. He was in Gretzky's office just for a moment. Down low again, backhand chance for McLeod and just didn't have the angle. Simon Prexler is still down in the corner. Saved with the glove. White gave it over to Adams, deflected in front, scramble play, it will not go. Woodring somehow kept that out despite a flurry of activity from the Saints in the last two seconds. But the goal from Mueller at 10.51 stands the test of time. The Saints will still have 90 seconds on the power play when we come back in the second period. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have your intermission report here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us, with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where 
treat you right, you'll see. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it. Today, tomorrow, and into the future.
MSHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Hogan Trucking, comprehensive transportation, straightforward solutions. And welcome back to the Hogan Trucking Intermission Report here from the Maryville University Hockey Center. Corey Madden alongside Todd Panula as it's one to nothing Maryville after the first 20 minutes. Uh, Corey, we said it a few times during the broadcast, overall there just wasn't the kind of energy that you would necessarily expect as you mentioned playing in front of the seniors, playing for the seniors, I should say. Uh, and, and really it's potentially the last home game of the season for the Maryville Saints. And they, they just didn't have that energy that you would like to see in that first period. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't. I don't know why I wasn't there. You, you, you got the, a, a good crowd here playing for your seniors, you know, the leaders of your team, and uh, Cole Bonnet and, and, and Jack Harrison that are two heart and soul kind of guys. And they just seem like they're just a little out of it. <laughs> so the, the shots were there for Maryville. They did end up having 16 on goal. But other than a, a handful of chances, it seemed like a lot of them were kind of from the angles. They were trying to stuff a few in from in tight. Uh, they did create offense, but it wasn't necessarily in those high danger chances overall. Yeah, there was a lot of shots that were kind of deflected, um, a lot of block shots too, and those are those are good those are good quality scoring chances and deflection. There was a couple of them that were really close, but they haven't really had like um, some high quality chances though. It's just just a weird period for Maryville. So very similar to what we saw last night, Maryville only the one to nothing lead after 20 minutes yesterday. So you feel like they kind of need to get that next goal a little bit early in the second period because these are dangerous games from a goaltender's perspective. Only three shots on Johnny Macera. And you always worry that it's going to be that one fluke play that just ends up going in. And uh, the goaltender hasn't had a whole lot of work to test himself. Yeah, he kind of coughed the puck up there early in the first. Something like that happens. It's a 1-1 game. And then, it's, then anything can happen in, in hockey. Still 90 seconds left on the power play if Maryville can get in there and score one and, and maybe find that second gear to celebrate the seniors. So a key man advantage coming up in the second period for Maryville as they try to increase their lead. Right now, it's just a one-goal margin. That'll wrap it up for your Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. When we come back, we'll have the puck drop on the second period. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. Anything on our plates. 
because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. Coke with coffee. We blended Coke with rich coffee for one very good reason. Your afternoon pick-me-up routine needed it. Simple as that. Coke with coffee. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse is called St. Louis Home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, Honored to give back to community charities and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. Treat you right, you see. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? One, two, three, four, three, two, one. Twenty fours will live in your head. I'm on. 33s put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, 33? Clowns up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. 50s. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Next. There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for zero to 99, more power for me. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time.
Back at the Maryville University Hockey Center. We prep for the second period. Woodring a little bit slow out of the locker room, which is uh, kind of odd. Normally the goaltenders are the first out. But he has taken place on the left side of your screen as you watch at home. Johnny Maceres down on the right end. It's because he knows. This is it. This is the period. He knows. <laughs> the, the storm's coming, is it? Yes. McElwain comes in on the far side, drops it off for Corpse, and then gets the return pass quickly out to MacArthur. Here's Zlotty. MacArthur again. Corpse on the far side. Straight away for MacArthur. Saints still on the power play. And then an errant pass leaves the zone. So we're gonna switch things up. I said we were gonna continue on with Mueller, but we did get semi-confirmation through a third party that from the parents, it is Miller. So Logan Miller with two goals here in the last couple games. Still 35 seconds left on the power play as the Saints come up from their own zone. After that uh, sustained possession in the offensive zone, now finding it a little bit more difficult to gain access. Comes to Miller. And then almost too many men for the Saints as that puck came dangerously close to Zlotty, who was going off on a change. Tyman Prexler dumps it in. Woodring gives it away, but gets back in between the pipes before Maryville could do anything with it. Turcotte digs in, Lonesdale is there as well. Back to five on five. Anderson comes off the bench after the penalty elapsed. Jackson White activates, puts it in off the right pad. Net was open, but Maryville just couldn't get to the rebound in time. Illinois chops it over here to the near side, and then Tymon Prexler couldn't handle it. Unstale comes into the zone, dusts it off, puts it down low. He was looking for Miller. He brushes it into Turcotte. To the far side, Tymon Prexler through the wickets. Oh, that would have been a pretty play, but now it's going the other way. In comes Matt V, even a shot on, and that goes wide. Saints with it in the neutral zone. Miller taps it, Lonesdale on the far wing. Just barely onside as he drugged that trail skate. Neither team with a shot on goal thus far. Icing is the call against the fighting Illini. Much to the chagrin of Francesco Adante as he was trying to get off for a change. Kind of another uh, slow start. I was, I was expecting some, some fire, some high shots up there. Illinois did a good job, you know, killing off that penalty for sure, though. Maybe we'll get an unexpected goal score. There's a, there's a lot of these uh, heads on sticks for Cole Bonnet, so maybe he's got some, some offense in him here tonight. Won't get an opportunity this time around as the puck just slipped past Garrett Hunter. Macera fires it over to the far side. Bonnet through the middle now to Edwards. Into the zone for Cameron Ware on the far side. In towards the crease, but Woodring saw it and smothered. 16.52 left to go here in the second period. The game uh, kind of living up to what we saw last night in strange ways obviously the first period it was the statistics here in the second period it's the amount of stoppages a lot of whistles in the first three minutes if you're a fan of the saints program overall we encourage you to tune in at uh, 8 15 this evening roughly as the Maryville Saints women's program will take on Indiana Tech. And that'll be a good test for them as they head off towards the conference tournament. So 
this is the final home game for the men in the regular season. There is uh, not, unless anything gets scheduled very late. So as things are scheduled right now, the Saints would be off until the national tournament because they are uh, technically a independent team. The conference they were supposed to join ended up kind of dissolving at the last moment. They hope to kind of reform that next year. One timer in for Cameron Ware scores. Two to nothing Saints, 15-52 left to go in the period. Well, that, was, that was a lightning quick goal. So we see it, and then again, somewhat of an innocuous play out of the corner, it popped back in front. I think that was intended for Edwards. Instead, Ware was there, had his stick down and just tapped it past the goaltender. So Cameron Ware scores it 4-0-8. That makes it two to nothing Saints. Trying to stretch it out. That was intercepted. Here's Adante. He was surrounded quickly by two Saints players. Matt Vive off the wall, far side for Dorian. He brings it up from the point. Shot from a tight angle, goes in behind the net. Helfer, his shot goes off a stick and actually goes up into the rafters. It was gonna go out of play either way, but it's just always funny when it hits the ceiling. Well, there's one for Jack. Three more. Three more points to get to 100. So if the Saints can get another five spot on the board here this evening, maybe he's got a shot. That would be something cool to get it done here on home ice as that shot goes into the glove of Johnny Macera. Chance from Alexander Matvey. Another offensive zone draw for Illinois. 15-20 left to go in the second period. White and McLeod having a discussion. Saints end up winning the face off and White has it in behind his own goal. Hard off the far wall, gets it out to center, but no further. Dorian puts it back in. MacArthur on the near side corner. Slapped down low by Illinois. MacArthur on it again. Zlotti tried to slide it out. Helfer was there for the hold. There's a check and a hard one from MacArthur as he took down McLean. Now here comes McLeod, shot on, glove save. The Maryville fans thought for sure that was going in. It's a good opportunity. Trying to cut it back across the green, but Woodring held his ground and made the stop. That was a fantastic opportunity, breaking right down the middle of the, the ice. And couldn't beat the goalie. Just the second shot of the period for Maryville. Shots are two to two in this period. Here comes Adams. Stick handles down towards the corner. Rims it around towards the near side. Anderson flings it back the other way. Midlinski handles the bouncing puck. Gives it back to Maryville at their line. Time and Prexler is poke checked. But then it slides away from Reifke. Hunter has it back in his own zone. TJ Prexler is stapled over on the far glass. Reifke has his stick lifted. McElwain leaves it for Hunter. Tapped in by Adams, no icing. Adams sidesteps the Illinois defender. McElwain got a piece of that. It goes out of play, so that'll take the face off out of the zone. 13.44 left to go here in the period. Saints win the draw. 
Corpse has it at the red line and goes cross corner. Turcott chases it down. McDonald seals him off, but the Saints still have the puck. Corpse with a wrister. They were looking for a deflection in front. Turcott waved a stick, but didn't have the timing down, so right into the trapper of Woodry. Thirteen thirty left, now a little bit less after Illinois takes it off the draw. Eddington was able to tap it just past Bonnet on the zone exit. Eddington is uh, the lone goal scorer thus far for Illinois. That was, a, that was a home run shot. Didn't end up crossing the end line, so that ends up benefiting Maryville as now they're in on the four check. Miller hands it off, Turkak gets it to Corpse, filters it through, Bonnet slides it through the slot, but nobody home for Maryville on a deflection. Lonsdale on his off wing, now switches to the forehand. Straight away, score! Colt Corpse, the dead man, makes it three to nothing. Corpse gets it at 7-14. Slap shot made its way through traffic, beating the goaltender just on the right side. And that's three on the board now for Maryville. Two in this period. And again, keep pointing it out only because it, I find it interesting. This game eerily similar to what we saw yesterday. Maryville was only up one to nothing after the first. They scored two in the second. All that has now happened. So it's up to these teams now to try to make the remainder of this one a little bit different. That puck pops up in the air and a big blow up hit there. MacArthur absolutely levels Reifke at the blue line. Illinois with a scramble in front but they can't get it towards goal. Harrison digs in along with McLeod. It's brushed out of the zone by Edwards. Now he skates it in after picking up the loose puck. He's hauled down and then spun around. Neither referee is going to call. Helfer gets it up the cob. MacArthur steps up. Not quite as much force that time around, but still another hit for the defender. Edwards finishes the check after the puck was gone. Held in by time and Prexler. He goes up high, actually hits Ware. Cobb just sauces one up towards the Maryville line. Hunter leaves it for time and Prexler. Tap pass from Charche to Edwards. Drop pass to Charche. He's looking for somebody on the far side. Cameron Ware steps up. Charche is out dueled behind the net. Matt Vive gets it up towards the line. Adante is there, lifts the stick, gets the puck. He's got a chance now, trying to get Macera out of the position. One-timer from the far side. Macera got back and made the save. Anderson gloves it down. That might set up a break here now for Maryville. Zlotty comes in to the forehand. Poke check by Woodring. Puck deflected out of play. And we'll have a stoppage with 10.47 to go. So a little bit more action on the Maryville side the last few minutes. A couple goals to their credit, and they're charging into the net as well. Yeah, that big hit kind of sparked a little something, and then they come down on this side, a kind of a ticky-tack play that maybe could have been called, maybe not. And that is, to the referee's credit, something that we've seen the last couple games. They've, they've had plenty of non-calls that people didn't like, but as long as you're consistent with it, then the players can get used to it. Corpse, a little nice little tap towards the near side. Dangerously across the top of the crease. Now there's a giveaway in the slot. But McLean didn't have any room to do anything. McLeod hammers the brakes. Corpse again. Nice little touch pass up through the middle as it was feathered for Chartier. Corpse again back at his own zone. 
McLeod gets it, Bonnet out to Zlotty. Poked away, Anderson puts it in. Halfway through the contest. Saints have tripled their lead here in the second period. Here's McIlwain, got a little too cute and dusted it off too much. Taken back by Adams. Carried over to the near side, plays it off the end wall. McIlwain from the far corner, gets it to Corpse at the point. Corpse looking for another one, that one off a of body. White walks the line, wants the slap shot, takes a wrister instead, deflected over the goal. TJ Prexler trying to keep it away from Alp. Turner holds it in, hard off the boards. Jackson White steps up. White curls it back to the blue line. Turner back to White. Dusts it off once, takes a shot, blocked by Alp. Turner couldn't get position. Illinois will get it to the blue line, and it did escape the zone, so played back in offside. 9.06 left to go here in the second. Saints with a three to nothing lead. Miller, Ware, and Corpse are your goal scorers. Illinois takes this draw. Helfer comes around. Cobb waited a little bit too long. Maryville puts it in. TJ Prexler steps up, gets a hip check to keep Huntley away from the puck. Saints get it up into the neutral zone. Taken back by Illinois. Cobb here on the near wing. Takes the shot. Blocker save Macera. Held in by Matt Veed. We'll play it back to the point. Dorian's wrister. That's knocked down. Breakaway opportunity. Here comes Lonesdale through the slot. Shot wide. Cut the angle on that shot a little too much. Lonesdale again. Comes in from the wing. From the angle. Into the middle. Turcott denied. Tried to spring the counterattack. Adante was... Just waiting at the blue line. Now they come in. Adante's got some space, but the pass just went under his stick. Six save from Macera on the shot from the near side angle. Illinois looking for a penalty as they had a couple guys go down. Lonesdale comes in. Here's Miller from the high slot. Two Turcotte on the far side, just out of his reach. The offense is picked up. Shots are 21 to eight. It means the Saints have put five in on goal here in this period. But they've had plenty of chances, and a lot of them have gotten blocked and gone out of play like that one. 7.23 to go here in the second. Maryville will change things up, as will Illinois. Miller and Lonsdales, they've kind of uh, added some spark to that fourth line. It's fun to watch. And yeah, they're trying to make the most out of this opportunity. You never know. They might get a call up if the Saints need some depth for the national tournament. Obviously, that'll be up to Coach Hogan. As they decide over the next few weeks uh, who's going to make that trip up to Boston. And obviously that's not official, but the way things have worked in the past, I believe it's the top 10 or 12 teams that get automatic bids and then everything else comes down to conference tournaments. So Maryville sitting relatively pretty at number nine. A Little bit of a late hit there as uh, Corpse was taken out of the play in behind everything. The puck was gone for a couple seconds, but I think with this one starting to tip more in Maryville's direction, the referees are gonna wait for anything egregious to put someone in the sin bin. Edwards forgot about the puck at the red line. Now Illinois comes in with numbers. Midlinski to the forehand shot. Mastera the save. That was a, that was a scary little save like you, you talked about earlier. Only nine shots on goal and then they come in like that. 
it's hard for a goalie to stay ready. Who's, you know, ready for that challenge at least. Hey, you gotta be mentally sharp. And so far, both goaltenders have done the job. Ed Coffey only ended up facing 10 shots last night. Did let the one in behind, but when it's a five on three power play, it's not too much you can do as a goaltender. That shot goes just wide. Somebody lost their twig. It's an Illinois player with it in the offensive zone. They've given it away. So Maryville coming the other way. Drop pass by Charche, but then it slipped away from him. Helfer in behind his own goal. Looks for something up the far side. Cobb has it in the middle. All still in the Illini zone. Pass through the middle, intercepted. Zlati puts it in. He'll head off on a change. 5.45 to go here in the second. Dorian hard around. Just enough to get it out past time in Prexler. McCarthy back. Now here's Adams from the near circle into the middle. Oh, what a save by Woodring. Beautiful chance there for McElwain. It was a great setup from Adams, but Woodring was coming across in what normally I think would be somewhat of a late move by the goaltender, but it ended up benefiting him there because that trail leg was able to make the save. Yeah, he was trying to go five hole and great save, great save. So MacArthur comes back. He loses the foot race with Matt Vive. Coach Hogan continues to mix things up a little bit here. As uh, Prexler had been paired with Garrett Hunter, right now it's Prexler and Ben MacArthur. Illinois gets it to the far circle. Anderson puts it into the middle. Oh, baby, what a save, Johnny Macera. Sticks out the glove hand and denies the Illini right in the slot. Matt V was right there, he thought he had a goal. Slap shot deflected just wide. And TJ Prexler will draw a penalty as he's taken down from behind. And now the Saints will head to the man advantage on a cross checking call. The senior standing on his head. What a save. We get another look at that. Somehow, Matt V, excuse me, Adante ends up all alone in the slot. And Masera just sticking out the glove hand. Some, some good edge work right there to get across the crease and get his glove out there. Great, great save. Masera, the more athletic of the two Maryville goaltenders, and he needed it on that play. So Anderson goes back into the box for Illinois. Saints will have another crack at it on the power play. One for four with the man advantage last night. Over one thus far this evening. Maryville trying to get into the zone. Here comes Time and Prexler. Slaps it on around. Alp wasn't able to get there as Adams was a step too quick. Adams comes up to the half wall. Huntley is on him. Adams stick handles around. Timon Prexler, far side point. Adams drags it, takes a shot, and Woodring made the save. 124 left on the man advantage, 340 left in the period. This is a never ending period. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like it's taken quite a while. That's one thing that I've always enjoyed about the women's games and I, I have yet to figure out the difference but it just seems like they go so much quicker I don't know if there's not as many stoppages or, or what the difference is but Illinois with the interception on the pass through the middle and we're guys that like hockey obviously we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't but Every once in a while, you just get those games to where it's like, man, this is taking a while. Sent on around, Zlati slows it up. Tapped over here to the near wall. TJ Prexler 
On for Zlotty in the corner. Brexler takes it back. MacArthur at the near side point. Far side for Corpse. Pressure coming. Saints pass around it. Comes to Zlotty on the circle. Straight away point. MacArthur the shot. That's off a of body and into the near corner. Helfer is able to guide it into the near corner. Slams it over to the far side, but it went off a stick. Corpse just kind of blindly plays it down low. He gets another chance. Back to the point. Nicely held in by Zlotty. He'll come up towards the circle. Poke checked, and then Woodring will cover. Ten seconds left now, and the penalty to Anderson. He's up on his feet, hoping that he can come out of the box with no harm and no foul. Saints trying to get settled in on this faceoff. Harrison comes in, wins it clean. Turner from the point straight away. That one was into the midsection of Alp. He's shaken up a little bit. One timer. Oh, and it's score! Jake Charche. I believe the penalty had elapsed, so it will most likely be an even strength goal. Nevertheless, it's number four on the night for the Saints, Jake Charche on the board. And Jack got an assist right here too. Well, Harrison got it down low, out top to Charche, just beat the glove hand side. And now Harrison up to 98 points. Harrison with his second assist of the evening. And Lonsdale gets a point as well. So here's Lonsdale cutting in towards the goal. He beats Harrison. Oh, baby, what a toe save. And they score on the rebound. The Saints have come to life. They've got five on the board. It's Jackson White. Eighteen sixteen, the time of the goal for White Charche at seventeen fifty one, and all of a sudden we've got four goals on the board here for Maryville. Now Harrison gets the assist. He's up to ninety nine. Can he do it? Here's Cameron Ware, drops it off. Now a chance! That goes high and wide. Hunter with the shot. That's blocked by the defender. Helfer skates it out. Here comes Adante. Far side, now into the slot. Matt Beave had too many defenders around him. Helfer with a chance. That goes wide. 63 seconds left in the period. Saints need to tighten up just a little bit defensively. Don't want to allow a late goal here. Bonnet from the goal line, up through to where. He'll skate it past center and brings it in. Right into the stick of a defender. Miller, he smashed up against the boards. Ware is walled off. 36 seconds left. Cobb flips it up to center, knocked down by Hunter. Taken down by Helfer. Saints will peel off the pressure. Now they come in on the four check. Cobb plays it right into the body of Adams. He was a little bit worried that that was going to be offside, so that allows Illinois to take it back. Off the skate of Corpse, so no icing. Time and Prexler to Corpse on the near side. Cheekily through the legs. Illinois holds the zone. Midlinski. Was defended well. 40 minutes are in the books. The Saints put four on the board in the middle frame. 
and we have a 5-0 score. We'll step aside and we'll talk about it in the second intermission coming up. This is the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us, with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right, you'll see. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it. Today, tomorrow, and into the future.
USHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Hogan Trucking, comprehensive transportation, straightforward solutions. What you want, Lucy. And welcome into the Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. Corey Madden alongside Todd Panula. Well, an offensive explosion there, Corey. Four goals making it five to nothing after what was a very slow start to the period. Yeah, I could feel it. I could just feel it happening. Well, I, you did You did call it before the intermission, and then the first couple minutes didn't look good for you, but it, it happened by the end. Yeah, and then, and then, you know, Jack only needs one more point to get to 100. It's a fun game so far. Look, the first period was a little, what you know, not a lot of steam. They found it in the second period. Let's see what they can do in the third. So Harrison with three assists to give him 99 points now in a Maryville uniform. Let's take a look at some of the highlights there. Was there were four goals scored by the Maryville Saints, and they open up the scoring uh, in the second period at 4.08 with Cameron Ware getting on the board. Saints were able to hold it in along the near side boards and cycle it around. Harrison was able to find Ware, and again, it was kind of an innocuous play. Harrison just kind of put it into the middle. I mentioned during the game, I think that was actually intended for Edwards. It finds where he makes the score. Doesn't matter who gets it as long as it hits the back of the net. But the Saints would keep things rolling after that as they would get a goal from Cole Corpse at 7-14. And again, the cycle play very good from the Saints as they work it around. Straightaway point to Corpse. He gets the little selly there from distance as that one was a seeing eye shot and ended up making it three to nothing. Saints would have two more. Jake Charche would score around the 1751 mark. Uh, Illinois with a chance to clear it out, but it was just kind of a scramble. Saints hold it in. Charche was taking it right from the goal, right from the goal line as Harrison, another kind of backdoor feed going from below the end line out in front, and he made it four to nothing. It would be five to nothing with Jackson White scoring at 1816 as another defender scoring for Maryville. The Saints come in on the far side. They work it down low, and it ends up coming back. Jackson White with the slap shot on the rebound chance was able to beat the goaltender over the glove hand side. So a little bit of everybody, uh, five different goal scorers, two of them defenders, Corey. So it's kind of just uh, been everybody all hands on deck offensively. Yeah, a lot of those goals you can see on the replay, they, they fought hard in the corner, nice cycling, uh, moving the puck, and then some of them were just great shots, well-placed uh, you know, shots and right place, right time kind of thing. But, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun that period. So 5 to nothing after 40 minutes of play. The Saints had five last night. Can they get even more here tonight? We'll discover that coming up in the third period of play. That'll wrap it up for your Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. When we come back, we'll have the puck drop on the third period of play. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. Good. 
Mm, for two. <laughs> anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good coke with coffee we blended coke with rich coffee for one very good reason your afternoon pick-me-up routine needed it. Simple as that. Coke with coffee. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that with 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money back guarantee and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right you'll see. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you in that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? Twenty fours will live in your head. Thirty threes put in so many hours they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, thirty three? Clowns up, old man. Run it back. I said, run it back. Fifties. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for 0 to 99, more power for me. We're back here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Ready to drop the puck on the third and presumably final period, unless there's some sort of miracle comeback in the works for Illinois. We start things off five on five, 12 seconds in, Bonnet almost loses it in behind the net, regains it off the back of the cage. TJ Prexler 
Misfires on the pass to Adams. Regains it along the near side. Adams flings it in hard off the end wall. It ricochets over to the far corner. Adams with the hold in. Skates it to the hash marks. Plays it in towards the middle. McElwain was the intended target. Dorian comes up with it for the fighting line nigh. Almost forgot about the puck and then he ices it. So the clock stops 47 seconds into the third. Interestingly enough, that offense in the second period came off a high shooting percentage because the Saints only had 10 shots on goal and four of them hit the back of the net. Now to Illinois' credit, they were getting a lot of sticks in the lanes and blocking some shots. So the Saints had more than just the 10 chances, but only 10 in on goal. 26, 26 shots on goal for the game right now for the Saints. 11 given up, which means that Illinois had eight in that second period. So Maceras had a little bit more work than Ed Coffey did last night. It's time that Prexler sends one in on goal, but Woodring saw it all the way. And one of the best saves of the season, really, in that glove hand stop. Yeah, he's had a strong game for 11 shots. He's had quite a few uh, good saves over there. So Harrison comes in on the faceoff. He'll go against Reifke. Harrison wins it, but it goes into the corner. Saints are able to claim it as Edwards gets it. Return pass for Harrison wasn't there. Cobb had it in the skates, didn't know it. Harrison backhands it towards the near corner. Turner fires, and that's about three feet wide. Shot from the far side point from White. Goes off of Reifke and into the near corner. Illinois trying to lift it out, unsuccessful. Here's Edwards, stick handling it around, tight quarters. Down low to where the puck bounced on him. Harrison throws the body check. Now Harrison with a shot. He was going for number 100 on the goal, but unfortunately, Woodring made the glove save. We want to see it. We want to see 100. It's got to happen. Still got plenty of time to do it. 17.45 left in the period. Chipped out by Illinois. They've got numbers coming, so Bonnet needs to be clean on this play. Throws the body on the reverse hit. Saints send it along the dashers. Fisher couldn't quite hold it in. McLeod was able to knock it out. Bonnet back in his own zone. From the near wing, goes through the middle. Corpse sends it off the far boards. Tapped in by Zlati to avoid an icing call. Saints keep it alive along the near side boards. The shot was wide and slowed down by Woodring. McLean takes it, goes rink wide. Nobody home for Illinois as they're changing. TJ Prexler slows it up. Comes over to the near side. And we're looking for McElwain. Illinois able to get it up to the blue line, but no further. Cross ice pass. TJ Prexler returns the favor. Hans McElwain bought it with a shot. He was trying to set up the senior defender. Tied up along the far boards. Matt Vive looking for Adante. They cannot get it out. Woodring is way out. Gloved down by Bonnet. Here's TJ Prexler in from the hash marks. Adams to Bonnet, Rister blocker save. They're trying. Well, Corpse with a slap shot, that goes out of play. Bonnet kind of frustratingly and uh, sheepishly looks down at the ice. He knows that his teammates were setting him up, but he was stopped by a good blocker save in the end.
There's somebody walking around with a Jack Harrison big head. <laughs> and uh, I, li I like the expression that he's got in there. It's very intense. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Comes out in front. Turcotte. He's denied. Diving in front of that one was Shane Reifke. Miller carries it on around. Fires a hard pass back to MacArthur. The return feed down low was deflected out of play. Apparently somebody needed some uh, medical attention on the Illinois bench as the Maryville trainer makes his way back across the way to the Maryville bench. Yeah, it looks like a uh, player's... He, he's not dressed. He's out of he's out of he's out of the uniform, and something's going on over there. Can't remember any play that would have injured anybody for Illinois, but looks like he's getting a wrap over there on his wrist. Sometimes it's those plays that you don't expect that actually cause the injuries, whereas the big hits, oftentimes guys can shake off. Another frozen puck, Harrison's out on the ice. He wins the face off. Timon Prexler has it knocked away and Illinois gets it out of the zone. Swept in by Huntley. Macera over to MacArthur. Near side for Timon Prexler, jabbed out of the zone. They were trying to spring the breakaway for Cameron Ware. Here comes Sam Edwards. He'll take a wrist shot. Missed on the far side. Five minutes gone. Timon Prexler to Harrison. He'll just guide it down. Sam Edwards lifts the stick. Couldn't come up with the puck. Harrison is taken down as he was a little bit reaching too much. Jackson White sauces one up, and it's swept in by Turner. Ware takes Anderson to the boards. Adante guides it out to center ice. Matt Vive cuts it off at the red line. Adante is in, tries to sidestep Turner, but he got just enough to separate the puck from the man. Ware comes the other way. Where in front, he was looking for Turner on the back door. This one ends up chipped up into the Illinois bench. So we'll have a stoppage with 14.08 to go. Man, he is a big dude to come in. <laughs> That's a big dude. Illinois trying to decide who they're going to have take the draw. McLeod is in for the Saints. Matt Beave eventually comes in. Saints win the faceoff. Illinois steals the puck. Slammed on around here to the near boards. Trickles over the far side. Zlotti is looking for Charche on the drop. Up for Matt Beave. Corp steps up and takes him out of the play. Bonnet looks to head up ice. Comes near side for Charche. He'll skate up through the middle. Reifke saw it coming. So he'll steal it briefly. Bonnet comes into the zone. He's looking for an outlet. Hands it off. Maryville's got a man down in the corner. That's McLeod. Charche gives it over to Zlotti. Here's Bonnet. He goes far side, and it's off the skate and out. On it again. This time he'll feather one in. Saints on the change. Adams, Prexler, and McElwain are out on the ice. A little bit of a bump there thrown by the goaltender as he was uh, putting a shoulder into Adams. Time of Prexler steps up. Gives it off to Adams. He stick handles through traffic. Tried to find TJ Prexler. He ultimately ends up with it. And behind the net, centering feed. Nobody there as there were too many orange jerseys in the way.
So shot came in, Woodring made the stop. We got a frozen play with 12.29 to go. Saints win the draw, another shot this time from TJ Prexler and Woodring makes the glove save. So to their credit, the Saints keeping the foot on the, pat, on the uh, gas. So another shot came in from the far side. Woodring saw it through traffic to make the stop. Maryville now up to 32 shots on the evening. Twelve minutes left for for Jack to get his hundred. Face off one. T.J. Prexler to Adams on the circle. His shot was blocked. There's time in Prexler. Rims it around. Trickles over to the far corner. McElwain got a piece of it. Time in Prexler, straightaway point, takes the shot. Woodring saw it all the way. Eleven fifty-eight to go. Saints up by five. Five different goal scorers: Miller, Ware, Corpse, Charche, and White. Speaking of Miller, he's out on the ice. He's got two goals in two games. Lonesdale's got a goal and an assist, so the two uh, freshman call-ups have had a pretty good run of form here. Adante gives it to Matt Vive at the center logo. Bounces one past the Maryville defender. Turner takes the hit to make the play. Now the Saints have numbers. They come up, Turcotte on the near wing. He's got Miller charging towards the goal, but it ends up floated in behind the net. Matt Vive couldn't handle it on the outlet. Turner gets it for Maryville. Turcotte taps it through the middle. Back the other way for Matt Vive. As Illinois comes in offside. That was offside by a couple yards. As, uh, Jackson White is down. And he chucks the Illinois stick away. I think he may have taken that in a... Unfortunate area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he wasn't too pleased about it. He'll head off on the change. But face off will come out of the zone on the offside. Dorian crosses the red line and fires it on around, and somehow that went off a partition, I believe, and out of play. So, why not? Why not? Another whistle. <laughs> why not? We've had plenty of them, especially in the second and now the third period. Remember, it's the Maryville Saints against Indiana Tech for the women's program. The face-off scheduled for 8-15. So we hope that you'll join us right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Dorian gloves it down, gets it up to the blue line, but held in. Here's Turcotte. Carries into the corner. Lonesdale steals it back for Maryville. Harrison's out on the ice. Bonnet holds it in at the blue line, and we get a stoppage. I believe we're going to have a four-on-four. Four. Does the referee look like he was signaling both players for Dorian and Turcotte to go to the box? Yeah, they got tangled up for a, a couple seconds over there. So Turcotte's trying to get over to the bench. Dorian is in the sin bin. Now Turcotte will go off. <laughs> I always find that entertaining when guys are like, I didn't do anything. I'm just going to go off on a change. Hey. The he, referees just say, hey, you get in there. He tried. Between, between that and the icing calls where they try to sneak off, those are always fun. So it is four on four. Interestingly enough, I believe they called holding on both players, which. Yeah, that's that they were just in the corner dancing a little, you know. 
Referee had seen enough of it, so it's uh, Edwards on the puck. Stick handles through, and he just lost it at the last moment. Otherwise, he would have had an open look. Here's Corpse. Bonnet set up. Corpse is going to still gallop on around. Eddington takes him to the wall. Slotty with it now. In towards the slot, peels away. Stomps on the brakes. Now he'll take the shot. Save was made. Rebound! No! Somehow it did not go. Woodring stuck out the left skate and kept number six off the board for the Saints. A good hold in from Bonnet. He gets the return pass. Comes near circle for Edwards. Tight angle. He gets it down low on the pass. Edwards absorbs a couple hits. Edwards still on it, now from the slot. Elects to shoot from the hash marks. And a right pad save. Corpse with it. He shoots right into the body of Nolan Woodring. Oh. And now Zlotty is down on the ice in a heap. Got a nice uh, little two hands to the face there. And look, he, he did his move. He's just going to the bench like, oh, no, I didn't do anything. <laughs> so Reifke will take a seat. Two minutes up on the board. Maryville with their third power play of the game. They are 0 for 2 thus far as that Jake Charche goal that did come just after the power play had elapsed. So we'll skate four on three for 28 seconds unless Maryville can score in that tie. Timeout taken here with 9.16 left to go. So this has got to be kind of a difficult game and series for Maryville because obviously you want to get the wins and it pretty much looks like Maryville is going to get that, but considering that Unless something changes, this is the final game before they head off to Nationals. It's, it doesn't really ramp you up for postseason play. Yeah, no, it, not, 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 not really. It, and it's, yeah, I guess it's just it's the way you schedule it. You can't foresee this happening. And that's another thing. A lot of these schedules are made well in advance, and I think the expectation when the schedule was made is that Illinois would be better than they are, but they've had a rough go of it in this season, only four wins to their name. Interestingly enough, four of those wins, all four of those wins have come in the last 10 games, so they've not been on a little bit better run of play, but just outmatched here against Maryville this weekend. Coach Hogan is up on the bench with a foot on the boards as well. He's animated about something. Maryville with a four on three power play. Jackson White straight away. Timon Prexler gives it back to White. Far circle now. Adams to White. Rebound chance. No, another save made. As Woodring really stepping up for his team despite the fact that five have gotten past him. White over to Prexler, shot on and another pad save. Adams now, as it's a five on four power play for a minute 25. Prexler almost lost his footing, or checked that it was actually Edwards. And a shot from Adams on the far side, Woodring catches it. Maryville's got to be coming up on a season high on shots. What? They're getting up there. They're near 40, 37 now. 117 to go on the power play, 832 in the period. Saints can't clear, or I can't hold, I should say, after the faceoff win. Maryville going with the power play of MacArthur, Corpse, McElwain, TJ Prexler, and Jackson Zlotty. TJ comes over and it's swept in on the backhand. 
Prexler trying to pilfer it away from the goaltender. Woodring still not back in the crease. Now he is. Shuffled towards the point. MacArthur holds it in. Sauce pass finds Corpse. He gets it down low. MacArthur can't handle the hot pass. Now he's got to get over there to keep it away from Illinois. Zlotty peels back. MacArthur takes the hot feed. Prexler skates up. He's hauled down by Matt Vive, and now we're going to have a five on three power play for 22 seconds. Kind of a silly penalty from the Illinois perspective, but it was a good move by TJ Prexler cutting from the middle over towards the far wing. The Illinois defender had no chance but to haul him down. Go token over there. He, he's trying to make this a coaching moment, you know? I think he's trying to inject some energy back yeah. into the team because yesterday he just let things kind of play out. He was in behind all the players for most of the game. Here in the last five minutes or so, he's been a little more active, trying to pump the guys up. Rallying the troops, hopefully. Face off one by Maryville, but it split the two defenders. Well, it should say the two guys back at the blue line. It's, a, it's four forwards and a defender. Here comes Adams up the middle, near side for Prexler. He's on his horse as he carries it around. Jackson White straight away. Adams with the shot, the rebound, chance put in behind the net. Five on three is over. It's a five on four for 90 seconds. McElwain into the corner. And now we've got another penalty called. But I believe it's going to be on both teams. Yeah, the I don't. Referee's definitely pointing for Jackson White to go to the box. Anderson will also go for Illinois, so that will make it a four on three power play for Maryville, barring any last minute adjustments. Saints are 0 for three with the man advantage thus far. Still a lot, lot, of, lot of game left here. I don't know if Illinois really wants to take it to a physical level. Maryville's a big team. That's what's been impressive about a lot of these additions. Seems like every year for Maryville, not only do they get bigger, but more skilled as well. It's not just adding sides for size sake, but we see it with guys, whether it's the defenders like Cole Corpse or the forwards like Cameron Ware. They're not just big bodies. They can skate, they can stick handle. I don't believe a timeout has been taken. The referees are just kind of having a conference over there, trying to iron out what's going on here. So again, barring any changes, I think Matt he... Beave is still in the box for 122. They've got the penalties to White and Anderson on the board. Those are matching, so Mm. They'll stay in there, although Anderson is now out of the box for some reason. I've, 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 I've never seen that happen. So they're... So they're not calling matching penalties. Referee's over there doing all sorts of hand gestures. Yeah. It might as well be sign language yeah, he was from up here. I can't tell. <laughs> yeah. I think he was telling on the still second. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looked pretty much like baseball kind of signals. Um, but it's going to be four on four for a minute 22 now. So that wipes out the Maryville power play. We'll see if they can still take advantage of a little bit of... Uh, Open ice with less people. 
Adams thought about leaving it for MacArthur, instead fires it far side for Timon Prexler. He exchanges places with his brother. Timon still on the puck. He's hammered by Eddingen. MacArthur is deking around. And then the slap shot from Timon Prexler didn't find its didn't find pay dirt. But you kind of pointed it out, Corey. And we saw it just on that play there. Illinois trying to get a little bit physical, but yeah, I don't know if that's the game plan they want to turn this into. Right. Especially late in the contest. I mean, I know that you don't want to go quietly into the night, but they're already down by five. Thus far, neither team has capitalized on any kind of special teams play, but you don't really want to end the game on a bunch of power plays either. Jack Harrison takes a couple slashes, and he's going to draw a penalty. I think that was a hook. I think he got a hook on that one. A hook, slash, take your pick. We'll see right. what they call, but right now Maryville will go on to the power play again. Well, I guess it'll technically even things up four on four for 27 seconds, and then they will have a power Slash. play. It was, it was one of them. It was one of the variety. Could have called either one because, yeah, the stick was in the midsection. Then he would take it out and chop Jack. Illinois trying to figure out who they're putting into the box. It's going to be Adante. So... Right now we've got the uh, Oprah Winfrey version of the penalty box here. It's to, you get a penalty, you get a penalty, you get a penalty. 27 seconds left on Jackson White's penalty. And then the Saints will have their fifth power play of the evening. McLeod, Adams, Charche, and Timon Prexler out there. McLeod was tripped up, but no penalty is forthcoming. Stretch pass out of the reach of Huntley. Timon Prexler comes back. 12 seconds left at four on four. McLeod drops it. Adams goes cross ice. It's off a shin pad. Charche almost gave it away if he had actually made that pass. It actually worked out for him. Now the Saints on the power play. McLeod, Charche couldn't handle it. Eddingen cannot clear. Adams comes to time and Prexler. Jackson White straight away, far side for Adams, and it rolled on him. McLeod jabs it, kicked at by Adams. Illinois sends it over near side. 110 left in the power play. Time and Prexler. Gets it down to the goal line, fired across by McLeod. Rink wide pass, Hyman Prexler in the circle, into the slot, shot into the netting, but not the right kind. 419 left to go. 55 seconds left in the Francesco Adante penalty. That shot went off a body, so the face off will stay inside the zone. Maryville's trainer has been a busy feller today. He's back and forth, back and forth. He's getting his steps in. Corpse goes blocker side. Oh, and it got behind the goaltender. I don't know if that one went off a body or hit off the waffle board and still ended up in behind, but it would not cross the goal line. Yeah, may maybe a post? I don't know. It was a Interesting play. Could have been anything. Yeah. Usually you hear the post. You would think, but the last time I was at the Blues game, uh, when they beat the Panthers, somebody hit the post directly on and it made no sound. I thought it was the strangest thing ever. It was a glitch in the universe. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> somebody sucked all the sound out. Here's Jackson Zlotty coming in, and his shot goes up and into the netting. 3.52 left in the, per in the uh, period. 27 seconds left in the penalty. I really want to see Jack Harrison get, get number 100 here. Not out on the ice as of right now. Saints win the draw, but apparently it was done unfairly, so push the reset button.
Illinois clears. Macera out of his net. Leaves it for Corpse. He turns on the afterburners. McElwain drops it. Zlotti carries in from the blue line. Pirouette pass, finds MacArthur. Corpse comes down low. They try to keep it away from Woodring, and then TJ Prexler is taken out behind the play as the extracurricular activity is picking up. Three twenty-five to go. Saints could not get one on the power play, at least initially. We'll see if they get another one here. Reifke is definitely going to the penalty box. There he's actually going to be seen off. So Reifke's night is done. Is he still having a few words with Colt Court? <laughs> As he waves him, waves him goodbye. Jack Harrison and Alexander Matviev are over near the official circle. So they're gonna try to see how this one shapes out. Maybe they'll they'll talk each other out of a penalty. As of right now, they haven't opened the penalty box for Maryville, so I always hesitate to try to guess because anytime I do, I'm always wrong. Given what we've seen, it looks like Maryville should be on the power play. And Unless it was just an unsportsmanlike and then the game ejection for uh, Reifke and there, there wouldn't be a power play. But you never know, strange things happen when the officials get over there and discuss things. It's really a tale of two different games here. The first, first half was kind of lackadaisical, then the second half, there's been nothing but power plays and 39 shots for Maryville and a couple goals. It's odd with all these power plays that nobody has scored on the man advantage. Saints came very close. The goal went in just about a second or so after the power play. Now Colt Corpse is going into the box. So as of right now, I would have to figure it depends on how long he's in the box because the penalty against Reifke is gonna be a four minute penalty. So that's a double minor. McLean will go in to serve that. Just two minutes on the board against Corpse. Okay, here we go. They're still talking things over, so <laughs> who knows? Goaltenders are just kind of skating around. They're like, what's going on here? Let's get this game underway. Shiny Macera has had absolutely nothing to do in this period. Illinois came in with 11 shots, and now at 325 left in the third period, they are still on 11 shots. And even with 11 shots, he's had a solid game. He had a, probably a save of the year, for him at least. Yeah, great A opportunity for Adante in the slot. Denied by a sprawling glove save by Macera. That was Illinois' best chance of the evening. And Maryville needs to get one more player out there. Now they've got their four. It is going to be four on four for two minutes. And then the Saints will have a, an abbreviated power play. Time and Prexler gets to it. Harrison is out on the ice. And check that, that's actually uh, Miller. Thought that was a five. Time and Prexler carries on around. Saints don't seem all that concerned with getting a shot off here, at least in the early portion. Down low goes to Lonesdale. He has a backhand shot. That was turned away. Miller from the near side. Guides it back to the half wall. Hands it off to MacArthur. He's stapled up by Eddingen. Lonesdale's able to steal it away. Lonesdale to MacArthur. Backhanded low. Miller back to the point. 
Walk in the line, MacArthur takes a shot, that's high and wide. 2.35 to go. Saints with good offensive pressure, at least in terms of zone time here. They dig in along the wall, referee allows it to continue, now the shot turned away. Lonesdale was looking for his second. Nice little toe drag and then a spin move from Timon Prexler. Eventually he just kind of ran out of space. Simon Prexler leaves it for Cole Bonnet. 35 seconds left, now here's a giveaway and they score. Saints set it up, that would have been a beautiful play had it been one of their own teammates. Instead, they handed it right to Patrick McDonough and the shutout is no longer an option. We saw a similar play a couple weeks ago where Ed Coffey, uh, excuse me, Ed Coffey should have had a shutout. It was given away by the defender, but Johnny Macera will not get his second shutout of the season as Illinois gets another one on the board. McDonough at 18-11. Makes it five to one. So the scoring happened in a little bit of a different fashion, but right now we have a, the exact same scoreline as we did last night. Saints with a chance for a late one here on the power play. Rebound chance, oh Harrison was there. That could have been 100 and it would not go. Here comes Sam Edwards. Harrison comes into the zone after Edwards was knocked down. Illinois gets a hold of it. 50 seconds left. Edwards, he takes a shot. That one went wide. Bonnet digs it out of the snow. Harrison to Cameron Ware. Back to Harrison, he leaves it for Edwards to the faceoff dot and he circles around. 30 seconds left. Illinois steals and they will clear. 22 seconds remain. Here comes Cole Bonnet. Illinois sends it the length of the ice and that'll just about do it. 10 seconds left, but Maryville is not gonna push it up. Harrison will be stuck on 99, but that's still a pretty impressive number. The Saints get their 19th win of the season. They improve to nine and six on home ice. So a good late push from the Saints here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. And they end their season in regular season in fine fashion. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll give you our final thoughts on this one. It's a five to one victory by your Saints. This is Maryville Saints hockey. Hello America, this is a message for the brave people who want to get a degree online on top of all the other things going on in their lives. The higher education system is broken. 75% of Americans say it's easier to succeed with a degree, but only 25% think the education system is fine the way it is. Something's not right. Here at Maryville University, we've been bravely disrupting the higher education system for nearly 150 years by putting students first, not the other way around. And now we're bringing it online. We believe education is not just about earning a degree, but about pursuing and achieving your dreams. That's why we develop programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. The future belongs to the brave. Let's be brave together. Be brave and learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. And welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. Corey Madden and Todd Panula. It was a big win for your Maryville Saints. 
Well, Corey, they didn't get any goals there in the third period, but ultimately they, they kind of took their foot off the gas a little bit. They had the shots, 14 shots in that period. Unfortunately, the only goal of the period came on the lone shot for Illinois off a giveaway by the Maryville defense. Yeah, that, that last period, it's just kind of hard to, for any team to get a feel for it. There was how many penalties in that last 10, 15 minutes of the game? So it was really hard for Maryville to kind of get, get some pace going there after that such a strong second period. Yeah, I lost count of how many penalties happened in that period alone, but it was Maryville with six power plays overall. Illinois had the two. Nobody gets an extra man goal, so all the goals came at even strength. Maryville would put five in the back of the net. Four of them came in the second period. So it was a rather impressive middle frame by the Maryville Saints. But the season, uh, in terms of regular season, coming towards a close, uh, there's rumors about a potential final game. Uh, we'll get more details on that. Check the social media accounts for the Maryville Saints. But in terms of what's on the regular schedule for now, it was a rather impressive way to close out the season against the opponent that they had on the schedule. Yeah, you you would, when you're getting ready for playoff hockey, you know, having a, a game kind of like a weekend like this where, you know, Illinois just had a down year. They were a strong team in, in the past. And so it was kind of hard for Maryville to get, uh, you know, get a playoff quality matchup with the playoffs around the corner. So we'll see what happens next. So they did their job. They got the season sweep over the fighting Illini. They won two games back in November. They win both games here in February. That'll wrap it up for everybody here at the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. We thank you for watching. Thanks from Eric Skelton for Corey Madden. I've been Todd Panula. Until the next time, Saints fans, have a good night. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association.